In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a MIDI file that wasn't locked exactly to a tempo, didn't have a metronome click that it was played with, or didn't follow it exactly. I'm going to show you how to take that and lock it to a grid in Logic Pro X. Now, why would you want to do that? Sometimes people are going to record something just with a natural flowing feeling. But what if you want to play along with them or add some other parts later and make sure they're all synchronized? It's hard to do if the tempo's fluctuating, but if you're able to lock it to a grid, then things will work out. You'll be able to quantize it and do a lot of other things like that, get other instruments to play along with it. So let's open this file first, open, Logic Pro X, and here we have it. Now notice the beginning of the file here, uh, it doesn't start at the beginning. So let's first trim the, the beginning and end to make sure it's um, starting at the beginning. I'm going to drag over here. If it doesn't go exactly where I want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in here. You can hold down Control while you trim it. And that'll let me drag exactly to where I want. It'll take it off of the grid here. Okay, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag the whole thing very to the back, uh, sorry, to the beginning here. Okay, now let's trim the end. The end has this fill stuff at the end, but it really ends a little bit earlier. Listen. Ends right there before all this other stuff comes in. These are quarter notes down here. Uh, ends. So I'm gonna trim at that point. Anywhere right around there is okay. I'm gonna double click down here to split it, or you can hit Apple T. Um, what do I want to do with this stuff? Um, let's try keep. That's fine. It didn't destroy any MIDI. I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm going to add the ending on later. I don't really need it. I mainly need to make sure that this whole stuff works. Problem is, check it out. The whole thing lasts from one to, it lasts like 14 and a half measures or 14 and a third measures, something like that. And it really should be 12 measures since it's 12 bar blues. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in here. When I'm trimming with the trim tool, if I hold down Option, it turns into this different type of tool. This is a MIDI time compression, tempo compression tool. It allows me to drag the MIDI left or right and change the whole length of everything. So let's do that. I'm going to make this last 12 bars like it should be. Zoom back out. Click on here. Hold down Option and drag until it's here. Didn't drag exactly where I wanted to. Um, it's really supposed to be right at this uh, edge here, so let's let's make sure that's correct. Click here, and then drag. There we go. Okay, so now I have, um, in theory, 12 bars. I'm going to double click on this as well to open it up in the MIDI roll editor. Go to the beginning. Let's check out what's going on down here. I'm going to hit this little guy which is this collapse mode shows me just the notes that are recorded and nothing else makes it easier to see what's going on I'm gonna zoom out a little bit make sure I see everything okay so those are this is basically me my, my lowest note uh, we're gonna hear that actually so this thing is quarter notes one two three four right we can see that they're all off by about a sixteenth or so, but not exactly the same amount. Okay, they, they're close to the measure, but not where we want them exactly. So how do we make them um, lock on exactly? That's where we need to do the beat mapping. So I'm going to drag this up a bit to make this bigger and easier to see. I'm going to view, configure global tracks. So let me see all the things like the time signature, um, tempo variations and so on. All I really need though, I don't need arrangement, I don't need marker, I don't need signature. All I need is tempo and this one, beat mapping. Now that I have beat mapping, let's actually drag it, drag it up even further because may as well be able to see what I'm doing. Um, now that I have beat mapping, what I can do is I can find these little parts here. This little grid here, I have a little line that shows me right where the measure is. And if I drag from that down to where I want, 
the MIDI uh, to start, it'll pull it back so that it's at the start of a beat. Let's see that. I'm actually going to drag it down to these little guys. So click here, click down, and then drag. I'm going to drag it to here, this little beginning. Look at that. It snaps to the beginning of measure two. And that's basically beat mapping. I'm going to do that continuously. Here, I'm going to do it every one, two, three, four of these notes, because these are quarter notes. Four of them makes a measure. And if I have every every fifth one here, one, two, three, four, here's my fifth. If I have the beginning of this fifth one, start right at this line here, it's going to be correct with my beat mapping. What that's going to do, as you can see over here, though, is it's going to change the tempo of things to make it fit whatever it was that was recorded. That's going to allow me to edit things on a grid and use quantization and all that type of stuff without getting rid of the fluctuations that maybe were nice sounding in the performance. Grab here, drag it to right there. That's on one, two, three, four. Um, I, this one is a little bit off too. And I just do this for a couple different ones, right? Get them all basically on five. Okay, cool. Now you can see them all working in four quarter note chunks. But notice these are still off. Some of these in between are off. It's just that the, the downbeats are all correct. It makes things a lot better. Now we have a, what's called a tempo map. We have all these different tempos that are assigned based upon the fluctuations of the performer. What does it mean though? It means we can fix everything because it's all nicely lined up to a grid now. So, if I zoom out a bit here, I know that all these upper notes, for instance, these are all half the length of these, basically, they're eighth notes. And I know that there's swing eighth notes, too. So if I highlight everything and go to the quantize, I can go down to here to swing eighth notes, and I can pick a setting. The more we go down here, the more it's swung, and it's, it's kind of a heavy swing here, so I'll try E out. Notice how everything moved to the side. Let's undo that actually for a second. You can see they don't all hit exactly on, right? This is off the beat. Um, same thing with this, right? Not exactly on that beat. Okay. Oops. So let's get back out. And now once we hit this eighth note swing, quantize, they lock to that beat, and you see they're exactly on. Okay. The beginnings of them, anyway. Okay. Now we play it. It's maybe a bit too perfect. So instead of having that exact thing happen here, um, I'm going to click over here where it says swing strength. Okay. And I'm going to hit that. And you're going to watch over here. It, they're going to kind of move a little bit away from the start point. If I move it all the way back, you see there, some of them will be quite a bit off. Maybe I'll move the strength, though. It's like 50% or more. 70% here. So now it's really close. More there. It's really close to the beginning, but nef nothing is ever precise and exact. If you played it in, you're not going to ever be perfectly on there. Only my machine would make it exact, and it's going to sound kind of non-human if you have it fully quantized. So I'm going to have it partially quantized. Now, if I play it, it'll sound together, but not exactly robotic. And that's it.